We now take the next step in our combination of art and science with Itai Tagam, who's a distinguished international conductor, originally from Israel. He's a one-time student of Leonard Bernstein and Claudio Abado. He's worked around the world. I know very well what he's about to do on stage, but it's another one of the presentations where I'm deliberately not telling you because there is a fair amount of, of uh, value in the surprise. So with saying nothing more, please join me in welcoming Itai Tagam. Hello, uh, my name is Itai, which is a funny name, I know, it's biblical, and there's nothing I can do about it. Uh, in Japanese it means, means actually, ouch, which is... But also that my profession is a bit funny, because I think about the name of the profession, conductor. You know, uh, if I was French, the name would be chef, chef, though, okay? so, chef sous chef and all the assistants. Uh, in, in, in Hebrew, it's even worse, because a conductor in Hebrew is the same word for winner. So there's one winner, and all the losers are actually doing the music playing. But the English choice of a word is very interesting, conductor. You, you, it's not only being humble about it, because not many conductors are very humble, I have to tell you. Um, you know, we say in our profession that there are a lot of semiconductors. <laughs> some, some conductors and very few superconductors. And what I want to show you today, you know, conductivity. How do you make a large group of people work together in harmony? Harmony is, is never to be taken for granted, right? Even in very small organizations. Uh, some of you must have uh, experienced uh, the organization of marriage life, which is a pretty small organization consisting mainly of two adults, sometimes a bit more. Um, and it's, it's, it, well, it's never trivial. So let's look at the first video and just think, who would you like to congratulate for the success of this uh, small, very shortened version of uh, this uh, video? This piece. And, oh. Well, you know it's not the first one, don't you? I'm sorry. <laughs> We've been rehearsing it so much. No, this is actually the second one. So you have to go back. I probably did something wrong, but I don't know what it is. Try to get to this... No. No, I'm sorry. You have to go back... Uh, yeah, well, if we had an orchestra, it would be easier, I guess. You have to go to the one who says Kleiber Radetzky March. Seems we're doing tight guys with Radetzky March. Radetzky March was uh, the most popular piece in uh, Vienna for the last, I don't know, since uh, Kaiser Franz Josef was a young person. They played all the time. But we can't get it here. Come on. Okay, would you like to sing together? <laughs> let, let, let's do what we have. You know, all music starts from noise, right? You come into a concert hall, the orchestra gets organized on stage. What do they do? Warm up. Then they tune. Tuning is already a message to other people saying we would like to work together. This is very nice, but that's not the one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's really nice. It is Kleiber, but it's not the one. You'll have to get to the one who says Radetzky March. It's the, the, the first one we have. Yeah, they'll get there. Anyhow, people are sitting on, on stage uh, uh, warming up. What do they do? If you, haven't played, you happen to play the violin, what do you do? You do all those fast scales. If you play the trumpet... So what is it that you hear when you're sitting in the hall and this is going on? Yeah, anticipation is yeah, what you feel. What you hear is just noise, cacophony, no, noise. Now, this noise is... All music starts from noise. Uh, and, and, and noise is great. When you don't have, when you have complete silence, it's, you know, dead. But this kind of noise gives me, as a conductor, a special joy of... Um, you know, I, I walk into a rehearsal hall, the, the orchestra is there, blah, 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 blah. I walk on, on stage, climb up to my podium, you know, the little office of a kind of cubicle, I would say. Open space cubicle with a lot, a lot of space. And, and, and I stand in front of this noise, and I do a very small, insignificant, almost, uh, gesture like this. But with this little gesture, a miracle occurs where uh, thousands of different voices come together to become one organized sound. I think that that's a great joy, this transformation, for conductors, also for the members of the orchestra. But for conductors, it can be very dangerous, actually. 
because you might uh, get the idea that it's all about you. All those very talented people, all virtuoso players, are sitting here and they are making noise. They need you to come and do this, and suddenly there's harmony. Now, I'm old enough and I've suffered enough in my life <laughs> to know that you can do the most beautiful, uh, whatever, um, 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 gesture and not get uh, harmony. That's because so many things can happen. Um, you, you know, it's enough that the orchestra has inner tensions and people don't want to play together, or they hate me enough to be ready to fail just so that I don't, you know, get the credit for a success. So many things can happen. So now, get something working. <laughs> I don't mind what. You can get back to Muti if you want. If, uh, so we'll do without the first one. Let's see how great conductors get orchestras to play together. So something, no matter what. <laughs> if you don't do that, we'll really have to sing together. <laughs> questions from the audience. I don't think it's the time for questions. <laughs> <laughs> the question from the presenter. <laughs> the unanswered question, as you know. Okay. Some video, please? Anybody? No, this is definitely not the one we want. Oh, yes. Good. This is Ricardo Muti. So, uh, did you like what you've, 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 you've uh, just seen or heard? Music was fine. Conductor was a true conductor. That is, you know, conducting is about synchronization. I want you to do something together, I have to tell you, right? Do something together. Please, uh, could you uh, clap your hands just once, but together? <laughs> that was a partial success. Can you do better? Huh? Oh. Mm. It doesn't really get better. What do you have to do to, to get it better? We need somebody from the proletariat to stand up and start a revolution. Say, three, four, bang. Yeah, okay, or a conductor. So, Muti is this kind of conductor. He tells you when to play, right? Do it with me. I'm going to do, and boom, okay? Do it now. <laughs> Wonderful. We can, <laughs> can start performing with this. Uh, so, uh, that is all fine. Music is about being together, but it's also about other things. It's, a, it's about joy. Could you detect joy? You so, he has a wonderful expression, this guy, but only one. So it never changes. I mean, and it, it doesn't really matter what piece he's doing, because it's, it's about his obligation, inner obligation, to be in charge all the time, to tell people what to do at every... I mean, like a micromanager. Hmm? No, really. I mean, he really tells everybody what, and he does it in a wonderful, wonderful way. Now, it's, sometimes it can be fantastic. You know, I, I've seen, I never worked with Muti. I went to see him conducting the Israel Philharmonic Orchestra for the first time in rehearsal. Now, in 10 minutes, the, the orchestra went like this. So, so, the, 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 got so much better. I tell you how. You know, the Israel Philharmonic Orchestra is a wonderful orchestra, but it's an Israeli orchestra. That means, you know, some of you may know, they come to rehearsal, they, they come to play, but they also do other things. You have a lot of rests, so why don't you send, you know, an SMS to somebody, or just speak? Yeah, it, it's very Israeli, in, in a, so, and, and we're all very used to it. But when Muti comes with this discipline, disciplinary attitude, they are all like angels, you know, when we come to and, and plus, you know, Muti just raised his hand for the first downbeat, and, and, and one of the violin players, just to see better, just moved the chair, and the chair squeaked a little. So Muti just looks at the score and says, gentlemen, I don't have a scratch of a chair in my score. 
And that was it. Everybody was quiet. The Eastern Philharmonic could listen to itself playing for the first time in who knows how many years. Yeah? Without interrupting itself. So the level got so much better. This is one story. The next story is Muti here was conducting his own orchestra, La Scala, from Milan. And three years ago, Muti got a letter signed by all 700 employees, I mean, musical employees, musicians working for La Scala, demanding his resignation. <laughs> they said, you are a wonderful conductor. We know that because when we follow your exact... Um, um, uh, the result is always good. But you don't let us develop as artists, because you, you just do it everything yourself. So you use us as, as instruments, and in the long run, you make a very bad uh, uh, job for the uh, opera as well as for us. So it's, it's, it's interesting. I mean, the, 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 the <laughs> let's try another one. Maybe this was too much controlling. By the way, Muti is asked, why do you do it? He says, responsibility. I have to be responsible for everything. Therefore, I need to control everything. Responsibility equals control. Let's see another one. This is Richard Strauss. I need to press something and pray. I pray. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, if we had too much control the first time, this is maybe, I know, uh, I don't know how he felt about it, but it's, you know, it's more letting things happen. But why, he can, why can he do it and get away with it? Because there is an agreement between him, him and the orchestra. Did you see he was turning pages in his... Uh, it's a funny thing, because he is the composer. He wrote the music. So why does he need to look through the... Maybe he's you know, too old and senile and doesn't remember what he wrote. But if this is not the case, then he is just uh, sending a very strong message to the orchestra, saying, look, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to interrupt. That's because all I want you to do is this. Play by the book. No interpretation. I don't want your inter uh, suggestion for interpretations. Yeah? And if you can do that, I mean, if the orchestra is the Vienna Philharmonic, and then, um, then you can get away with doing very, very little. Besides that, you know, that, that, that was very suitable for the time and for his own um, 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 personality. He wrote what he called the Ten Commandments for Conductors. The first was, if you sweat by the end of a concert, you must have done something wrong. <laughs> That's the, first. the fourth one, by the way, was, uh, um, uh, he said, never look at the trombones. It only, it only encourages them. <laughs> so, so, there was something about him personally looking for the... So he found a method of not having to be involved with the people, but just, just telling them, you know, this is tradition. You do, what about in innovation? What about inspiration? We'll have to look somewhere else. Let's look at Karajan, that, our, our next conductor, great conductor, Herbert von Karajan. Herbert von Karajan conducting the Berlin Philharmonic. It's so beautiful. Have you noticed, uh, I think, at least two interesting things happening? First of all, uh, the eyes. Did you see that? Closed all the time. And the hands. Did you see the hand movement? Like, you know, I'd like to try something with you. Remember, I, I conducted you and you clapped once together? Let's do it twice now. First, I'll repeat the Muti thing, and then I'll do Karajan. See what happens, okay? Now, like a Muti, you have to be ready because Muti is not taking <laughs> yeah, prisoners. <laughs> okay, let's do it. And, okay, more or less, let's do it again. <laughs> Great. <laughs> You've been getting very serious when you do it. <laughs> now, with, like a Karajan, let me close my eyes, get into the music. Huh? Do it with me, please. Clap. <laughs> Uh, 
Uh, it's not together. Why is it not together? Because you don't know when to play. Well, even the Berlin Philharmonic don't know to, when to play, actually. But you know what they do? And it's Germany, so it's not, uh, I'm not cynical about it. <laughs> they, they, <laughs> they, no, they are not cynical. So, uh, uh, they actually look at Karajan, and then they look at each other, saying, did you understand what, <laughs> what he wants? Now, let's do it together. <laughs> And actually, the first players, the, the leaders of the section, actually, with the body movement, make the orchestra play together. And when Karajan is asked about it, he says, of course, the worst damage I can inflict on my organization is to give them a very uh, um, precise, uh, because that create, creates a one-on-one uh, -on -one relations between me and every member of the orchestra. They are like horses with the, with the blinders looking at the conductor. I want them to connect to other people. So I want to be unclear enough for them to understand the music and then give some sort of interpretation to what I do and play together. That's nice, I think. Uh, it, well, he was their conductor for 37 years, so it does take time to get there. But, uh, but what about the eyes? Why doesn't, doesn't he look at them? Huh? It's, it's all very spiritual, but not looking at, the, at, at, the, at your players might be a problem because there's so much to be uh, learn from just watching somebody before he even plays or sings or whatever. You see the, the, the way the bow is going, you know the, the vibrato. So you know how the first sound is going gonna, is gonna to be. So you can bring the orchestra to serve better your uh, soloists from within the orchestra. If you don't do that, there's a wonderful uh, um, uh, story about Karajan conducting in London, not his own orchestra. And uh, of course he goes like this, he's cueing a flute like this, poor guy doesn't know when to play, so he says, Con uh, Maestro, with all due respect, I don't understand, when would you like me to start? So what do you think current reply was? He actually said, you start when you can't stand it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> which, is, which is, what does he mean by when you can't stand it? He says, okay, I know I put in a, under a tremendous pressure because on one hand, I, don't, well, I say you're a musician, you, you'll know. Yeah? But not looking at the... You see, the most wonderful thing that could happen to this uh, whatever flute player would be if Karajan would look at him and then watch the way he's breathing and then take it from him and somehow... So this guy knows he contributed something. No, Karajan doesn't look at him, so this guy knows he has to guess what's in Karajan's mind. So it's, it's spiritual because he's like a guru, like a, you know, the, the actual music is happening in Karajan's head and everything else has to serve the music. So maybe we have to look further. <laughs> let, 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 let's look at uh, Kleiber, Kleiber, Carlos Kleiber. Uh, let's see what you think about this guy. I know, yeah, I, we chose to stop there because there's something physically so engaging. So, um, so you might, this guy is obviously having fun. Yeah? You know, it, it, again, not to be taken for granted. I often show it to people in serious you know, work uh, context, and people are getting really annoyed. You come to work, how can you having so much fun? I mean, something must be, um, maybe you're not really need it or whatever. No, uh, this is the essence of what he does. Now, this doesn't yet explain, even though you see the wonderful dance movements that he does. But what about, I mean, when you're dancing with somebody, I think uh, control somehow goes away and instead comes in trust. When you, I, I, I can dance, but I, I can watch people dancing the tango. And two people dancing, it's, it's a... Uh, uh, so much trust because it's so intimate, but also physically. When you're dancing with somebody and you throw her into the air for an elaborate pirouette, she uh, trusts you to be there when she comes back. You know, if you had a phone and you uh, went away, she won't dance with you again when she gets out of hospital, probably, or something like that. Uh, so, so, so dancing is about trust. And I think there's something. Now, how, how, how does, does it work? Why should they uh, trust this guy? After all, when he does this, 
it's not it's not uh, a, a direct uh, um, a request from every violin player to take the violin and you know like Mick Jagger uh, whatever. Again, they have to. They have to understand what he does. With Muti, it's very si simple. You remember Muti, yeah? You're sitting there, you want a reference from your boss, you look up, you know exactly where you are. With Kleiber, you look to the conductor, what do you see? I mean, the guy was here. Most chances you won't see him at all, yeah? So how do you know what? This, the way this guy works is to create a process and to control the process. He infuses the process. I mean, somebody just um, gave the metaphor of uh, uh, like going on a roller coaster, yeah? You're going on a roller coaster, it's a lot of adre adrenaline, it's a lot of feeling f of fun and, 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 and freedom, a day out in Disney World or whatever, uh, but then how much space do you really have to maneuver when, when, you're, you know, when you're on this? You're kept in place by, by the Im immense inertia forces created by the process. So this guy actually creates a process. How do you do that? Well, physically you've seen. Um, now, I want, to I want to show you uh, the, the continuation of this. You also do need some sort of authority. You remember Clay Shirky? You need some kind of boundaries. Yeah? Look what happens when one of the uh, trumpeters plays a not so well uh, attacked um, um, sound. Kleiber cues him in and then reacts. Look now. Huh? Do you see that? Second time for the same player. Huh? And the third time for the same player. Huh. Uh, that was quite clear. First time was, this is not what we agreed upon. And the second one, better get it right, it's really important. Third time was, wait for me after the concert, I have a... <laughs> so, it's, it, it's as, you know, demanding, as precise as, as a Muti concert. In fact, if you ask Muti, who, Muti, if you ask Muti who's the best conductor in the world, he says uh, Kleiber. From the point of view of, of Muti, of wanting, you know, what you must have in an organization, in an orchestra, certainly you have to have a controlled process. As this guy controls the processes even better. Because it doesn't deal with controlling people, but rather with controlling the logic of, of, of the process itself. But uh, I don't think people would buy into that unless there was something else. And there's the something else. Uh, it might surprise you. The same conductor, Kleiber. Let's see them, Kleiber conducting Mozart. What's going on now? How would you explain that? <laughs> ah, there's the, there's the reason, I guess. We have a soloist. Somebody with a special contribution. So the boss doesn't mind, you know, taking a step back and inviting the soloist to the center stage. Now it's the, all, the, the whole orchestra. Look at the invitation. Oh, it's so beautiful, right? so, so inviting. Now, the nice thing about it is that he doesn't really go away. He doesn't say, look, I'm in the cafeteria, call me when you're done, or something. It's, he's there 100% for, the, for, for his, his guy, for the soloist, but in a different way. He'll come back again, so you can see. Look. Now. The eyes. And he goes on. Isn't that beautiful? I mean, it's not like... A great conductor, you cannot stop. In the middle. I guess that's it, yeah. So it, 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 it's not only, you know, looking at him and, and seeing a feedback which is far from being just, uh, you know, this is not bad, or good work, whatever, you can see the inner working of this feedback. He's just enjoying himself so much. But there's something more that has to do with control. And I think it's interesting. Look, most of the things we do in life, our relations with the objects or with the people, we do under the 
conviction that Isaac Newton was, was right. Yeah? So you, there's an action of reaction. I, I give something uh, a punch, then it gets punched, but also my hand, I'm sorry, uh, is, is hurt. Action and reaction. So, uh, for example, if I wanted, again, Sylvia, if you, you don't mind, I want to conduct you, and I want you to, to play staccato. Staccato, pam, pam, pam. Now, if I had a long enough baton, I would just poke you, pam, pam, and you would, pam, pam, pam. But of course, the unions that they don't uh, approve of this uh, procedure, <laughs> and besides, I don't have a long enough. Uh, so what I do is, is the next best thing. I just look at Sylvia and do something like this. I throw, uh, you know, pulses of energy, and, and she understands. It, it, that's Newton. But what he does here, this Kleiber that we've seen, is like um, uh, um, an Einstein universe, flexible. You see, when he, did you see the, 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 the second where he, his eyes actually went up like this? He was, you know what happened? Gravity vanished. Gravity is no more. And therefore the sound play, played by, by this oboist can go all the way up, completely weightless. And it's not about the, the, the uh, oboist understanding what the conductor wants. Because the conductor, I can look at Sylvia and say, <laughs> I can do that as many times as I want, and I, I, I don't make it happen. How do you make it happen? You actually change the characteristics of the universe into which Sylvia is playing. You understand? So now you have people, two people, the oboist who has co complete autonomy and control over what he does. So he's, he's a very satisfied person, I think, because he knows his, you know, it's his achievement. But you have the full control of the conductor, only they control different things. So control is no more a zero-sum game. You can have two people exercising full control, and only the meeting point of, of these two things is, is, is what you see, which is, I think, the best uh, music in the world. Uh, uh, I think most musicians would, 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 uh, would agree that Kleiber, from the point of view of, of, view of creating a process and getting build, uh, people involved, in, is the greatest conductor in the world. Now, uh, what we're going to see now is maybe um, uh, the other side of the same uh, idea of a great conductor. You have the process, now you have the meaning. We had the process, now the meaning. Lenny Bernstein, you all know. Um, uh, just, just look at Bernstein with Mahler, which was his trademark, a little bit. Yeah, let's see that. So what did you see? You saw the baton, which is authority, changing hands. He is no longer telling people what to do. The baton goes to the other hand. Yeah, that's, that's one. And then you saw the faces. Did you see how many different expressions? Do you know why? He was not always smiling. Or, no, this is a Mahler symphony, and it's all about the meaning. So Esther here is a violin player in the orchestra, and she plays a painful sound. Now she looks at Lenny. What does she see? The guy is suffering under the, the influence. Now, not so that you want to stop. It's like uh, enjoying himself in a Jewish way, if, if, you, if, you, know, <laughs> if, you, if you, know, you know what I mean. He's just happily immersed in his own suffering. But it doesn't have to be just suffering. <laughs> Somebody else can do, uh, play, play a sweet note, and you can look at, at, at Bernstein as uh, like melting with... Um, and, and, and so the, the, the individual player actually knows that it's he or she that does the difference. Who's the real conductor now? It's the one playing the music. And what Lenny does is just to, 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 to enable this to go to other people in the orchestra, to go to the audience. He connects. He's a real conductor in, the, in, in, in that sense. So um, we have a dialogue, a dialogue uh, um, between the, 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 the conductor without a baton, only with reacting uh, to, to what he hears from the players. Um, of course, there has, to, there has to be a shared meaning for this to work. And that's why I want to show you this beautiful uh, uh, little clip from a 
rehearsal. Lenny Bernstein, a, an orchestra made out of young people from all over the world coming, and in one week you had, he had to make them into an orchestra that can play, go on a world tour, playing the most difficult, or one of the most uh, difficult pieces we have in, in the repertoire, which is The Rite of Spring by Stravinsky. How do you do that? Look at Bernstein. Meaning is everything. I think you're all too well-mannered. You've been brought up, brought up too well. Trop bien éduqué. The big downbeat in the tutti has to last the full quarter. Ah, really bestial. I mean, this is beastly music brought to the highest, most refined point. Oh, so. We need this, uh, it's primeval, primordial, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I mean, these are big uh, prehistoric memories of, of uh, Russia or of the animal kingdom, whatever you want to call it, whether it's a rhinoceros or a buffalo or, or just the feeling that one has in the spring sometimes of wanting to be immersed in the, in the earth itself. You know, you've all been through that. These dances are all performed by adolescents, so I guess uh, a lot of you should know what I'm talking about. But think of that. Think of the times. I'm not just wasting words. All the times that we all experience in adolescence that I remember like yesterday when you're lying on the ground and it's spring or summer and you lie down face down on the ground and you want to kiss it you watch the grass grow you listen to the grass grow and you want it just to enfold you you've all had that experience you're lying near a tree trunk and you want to take it in your arms <clears throat> that's what that down is okay so much talk so, so I'm so glad you're reacting this way. Because why does it work? Because it's all about authenticity. You believe this guy. You believe, you, you know, young people. You tell them go and hug trees, and they might be quite cynical about it. How many of you hug trees on a daily basis? <laughs> but but looking at this guy, and he's immersed. He does this, and you believe him. So, in a way, he empowers his people by telling them your world is larger than you think. Just come with me and you'll see. He wants to connect with them as a true leader, not where they are, but where they can be. Yeah? So that, 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 that's what he does. Now, when you do all this, and we have to conclude with this, uh, I'm going to show you, uh, if, I mean, as much as time allows, uh, what Lenny Bernstein with the Via Philharmonic can achieve after this is, this is done. So our last uh, clip. <laughs>
40, 40 seconds. 